Hello there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, Arteza reached out to me again for another collaboration with them and uh, with no expectation other than to just use the product and give my honest review. So they sent these to me for free. They sent the 60 gouache colors. And if you're unfamiliar with gouache, it is a type of watercolor and it um, is much more opaque than regular watercolors. So it's obviously a little different to use. So I am not an expert on gouache and honestly I have only used a white gouache before. So this will be new for me. Um, and I'm a card maker so keep that in mind. Now I, I do dabble in watercolor. I am not a professional artist by any means. Uh, I just like to have fun but I'm going to be reviewing these from the perspective of a card maker. So a paper crafter card maker and um, not from the perspective of somebody who like paints beautiful scenes all the time. So keep that in mind. And um, so yeah, it's got 60 colors in it. It's got quite a bit of colors and it gives you its light fastness. Now I've said, I've, I've heard to kind of take that with a grain of salt and uh, it does have the transparency here. So most of these colors are extremely opaque. Only a few look like they might be slightly transparent or maybe see through, well not see through, but um, transparent. <laughs> uh, only a few of these colors look like they would be transparent or semi-transparent, but most of them are going to be opaque. So that is that. And then we also have these 15 miniature brushes. So we'll review those a little bit. It looks like um, they're all a little, a little bit different. And I will use these with the gouache as well. And it looks like there's five liner brushes, five spot brushes, and five round brushes. So there's those. And then they also sent the bone folders. This is a set of four. So I will review these as well at the same time simply because I'm going to be doing some swatches and I'm going to need to fold my paper so that it fits. So I'll use the bone folders and let you know what I think of those as well. All right, so I'm going to go do some painting, do my swatching, and we'll be back. All right, let me show you first of all how I made my swatches. I started with this Arteza Expert Watercolor Paper. This is cold press, so it's dual sided. The cold press side would be the side with a little bit more um, texture to it. And then the other side, or not the cold press side. Oh my gosh. So let me start off by showing you how I made, or at least telling you how I made my swatches. I did it with this Arteza Expert Watercolor Paper. This is cold press. And so once, and it's dual sided, one side is textured and the other side is smooth. And it's 11 by 14 and 140 pounds, so it's fairly heavy weight. Um, and I've really been enjoying this watercolor paper. Uh, it's a good price and it seems to work pretty well for card making and uh, for the things that I use it for. So I used this and what I did was, because it's 11 by 14, I cut it in half. So 7 inches, so it would be 7 inches by 11 inches. And then I stamped this stamp, which is 10 across. I stamped that all the way down. <clears throat> and this is the color swatches. Stamp and die set from Waffle Flower. I love using this for my swatches because it has you know different ones that you can use. But I decided to use this one, and um, you'll notice that I have one that's white and one that's black. I don't have any black watercolor paper. I just didn't see that it was necessary for me to buy black watercolor paper. So what I did to make mine black is I used some Dina Wakely Media black gesso. Um, and I basically just painted all over the top of the one side of the cardstock. And then I stamped the same stamp using some Brutus Monroe pigment ink. This is the alabaster pigment ink. And that'll most likely get covered up, and a lot of this will get covered up as well, but at least it's a gauge for me for where I can color or paint. Um, because again, as I said, these are opaque watercolors, and I figure because they're opaque, they probably look really good on black watercolor paper or possibly even black cardstock if you don't use a lot of water. So, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and 
actually do my swatches. Okie dokie, we are back. I have done my swatches, so all 60 colors. I swatched them out onto this Arteza Expert Watercolor paper. I showed you the pal or the paper pack earlier, and so what I did is stamp them all out using this one because there's 10 in a row and there's 60, so I stamped it, you know, six times. And then I marked all the color numbers, and I actually took a Sharpie, and I went over this middle line because I wanted to see the opacity. And uh, for the most part, they're fairly opaque. Uh, some are a lot, much more opaque than others, but I thought that was a good gauge. Um, I don't understand the numbers because I was trying to look at the numbers and just see like which ones were close to each other. Maybe there was a color family. I don't know if it has to do with their pigment or what the case is. It does look like they're shimmery ones because they do have like, um, for example, this one, they're pearl ones, which have mica in them. It does look like those are of the 200 category. So it looks like if they have any of those, they're in the 200s. Yes, it doesn't look like there's any 200s that didn't have mica powder in them. And they're really pretty. The shimmery ones are very, very pretty. But part of the reason I do swatching is because if you look at some of the swatches, they are the, uh, so I also painted it right onto the tube as well. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to see how well it matched with the label that they have, and it is different. So that way, if you just have your tubes sitting there and you're grabbing based off of that, there is some color on the tube. Now, a lot of them did match perfectly. Like, for example, this one. You can't hardly tell that I painted right on there. That's great. But again, swatching is really, really important because if I did want something that was this color that was that dark, you know, I couldn't base it off of the label of the packaging. So that's another reason why I swatch. And also then I just have it right there. Uh, and I also, as I sh said, was going to do it on some black. And I did do it with this black gesso. I think it would probably be better to do it on some black watercolor paper. But for me, it just wasn't economical to buy black watercolor paper. But it is nice to know that this paint will paint onto dark surfaces, which is nice because watercolor doesn't typically do that. Now I learned a little bit about gouache in this process because I'd never used gouache before. Uh, in my interpretation, again, keep in mind, I'm a card maker. I am not a professional painter or anything like that. I typically like to paint images that are stamped out. I'll occasionally paint things myself, but again, I am not some expert watercolorist or painter or anything like that. So as a card maker, one of the things I learned about gouache in, is that I would say that it is a cross between acrylic and watercolor. Acrylic because it's got the opacity, but watercolor because it can be reactivated with water, which is really, really nice. Um, and so, yeah, I've got those two swatches that I made. And then I did go ahead and I painted on a couple of these watercolor cards that I have. And this is on a smooth side. And so as I was painting this tree, I was thinking, okay, that is why I love gouache. Because I am able to paint right onto this tree using different colors. So I started with a light color and then I moved on to a darker color to add some shading. And then I was able to go right over the top with the white. Now you could, if you just like your watercolor and you don't want to mess with gouache, you could just have, uh, you know, your regular watercolors and have some white gouache, just a tube of white gouache, and that would be helpful. But I do like how they're able to layer and not necessarily, you know, just mix with the color underneath. They can layer on top of each other, which is pretty nice. And I did have a lot of fun painting these. That being said, I also used the paint brushes that they sent me. Let me find the little... So they sent me these, Arteza sent me these 15 miniature brushes, and they had five liner, five spot, and five round as a card maker. You know, I gotta say, when, I, when they first sent me these, I thought, I'm not gonna use those very much. But I can say that if you like to paint smaller objects, these are a win. Um, and they're not expensive. 
So these are like an absolute because they have such fine detail. So you could paint these smaller, and I found myself having to use those for these smaller images, like the little dots or the stripes. Um, and it was fun. I can see just sitting and doing that. It was so much fun. I did use a palette pad, and this is just um, just palette paper that I have that I got. Uh, I think I got this on Amazon, but this is nice because it's easy cleanup. You know, you can peel off your, your palette piece of paper when you're done with it, or just close the book when you're done with it as well. I did notice that the gouache does dry fairly quickly, so if you like your paints to stay um, wet, you know, this might be a little bit of an issue, but I will say, again, because it's gouache, you can just reactivate it with your water, which is great. Um, I also used the bone folders that they sent me to fold these, and then I messed around with them a little bit more just to kind of fold stuff, and um, I don't really care for these that much. I will say, of this four pack, my favorite ones were like the traditional and then this one. These ones just, this one did not feel right in my hands. I tried moving it around different ways to try and get a good crease and it just, I wasn't super excited about that. And this one just didn't feel right in my hands. The other thing I'll say is that they feel, they're very lightweight. And I have an old bone folder from Stampin' Up! that I use, and it just seems to have a little bit more weight to it, which I like, and it doesn't have any bend. This seems to have a little bit of bend, so I don't really care for that as much. But if you just would like a bone folder and you want inexpensive, Arteza has them, and so I'll have that listed down below as well. All right, so would I recommend the gouache now, never having used gouache before, I think this is a super fun medium and the price point isn't bad for the 60 that you get. It's less than a dollar per tube and you're gonna have these tubes forever. Uh, they're probably very good uh, student grade is what I would say. And if you're just wanting to dabble in different mediums, give it a shot. Um, these are fun. I, like I said, really enjoyed painting these little images. These were fun too, so um, do you need these in your stash? No, nobody needs all the things. I like to have all the things because <laughs> it gives you options, but you know, it's personal preference and gouache is something fun. I'm really glad that I was, I had a chance to kind of dabble into it. I probably wouldn't have done it had they not sent it to me, but having given it a shot, I really do like the opacity. I think this would be great for splatter as a card maker, of course for the painting, um, but splatter for sure because of the opacity and yeah. Yeah, so I will have all these items listed down below in the description box if that's something that you're interested in. I'll have the I'll have the bone folders listed. I'll have the the little paint brushes listed down below as well. And then I'll of course have the gouache and all the other products that I use listed in the description box down below. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments section and I will try to address those because you know I'm I'm not done using these. I'll keep using these. And um, yeah, so if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I typically have about four videos a week. And as always, thanks for your support and your love and your comments and everything else. And we'll see you soon. Bye.